All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today, Reduce, Reducing Sodium in Senior Meals, Tips and Tricks. We've got a great setup of speakers today, and we will get started. So I'm Laura Boris. I'm a policy analyst with NANAS. And this webinar is part of a grant with the ACL's Nutrition and Aging Resource Center. And so we're happy to bring you this webinar on their behalf. So we have three speakers today and a little bit of a change. <clears throat> so the, our three intended speakers were our Sherry Maniac, Catherine McPherson, and Pam Smith. And Sherry Maniac is the Executive Director at the Council on Aging for the City of Chicopee in Massachusetts. And during the pandemic, she and her chefs overhauled the menu for their congregate meal program to provide scratch cooked meals that were very low in sodium. And speaking today on Sherry's behalf is Ann Fountain, one of her chefs, as Sherry was unable at the last minute to make the webinar. Then we also have Catherine McPherson. She's a registered dietitian and chief nutrition officer and senior vice president of healthcare strategy and development at Mom's Meals. Mom's Meals provides many home delivered meals and including medically tailored home delivered meals. And then we have Pam Smith. Pam Smith is a registered dietitian and nutritionist, food service industry culinary consultant, TV host, and radio host, author and speaker. She has worked with the Culinary Institute of America and many other groups on sodium reduction and other nutrition related topics. So why, why is there a push to reduce sodium? <clears throat> um, reducing sodium intake has the potential to prevent hundreds of thousands of premature deaths and illnesses in the coming years. And so the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, has led a voluntary strategy to lower the sodium in foods. And these targets align with the dietary guidelines for Americans and the dietary reference intakes that Older Americans Act senior meal programs follow. And so nutrition programs can make small changes in what they buy and how they prepare meals to help meet these sodium goals, which is what you're gonna hear about from the speakers. And so to Lead it off is Anne Fountain. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Anne Fountain. I'm the chef at the Chickabee Senior Center. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what we do here as far as low sodium. Um, we do a lot of scratch cooking, so we don't add salt to a lot of our stuff. Um, you want to go to the next slide? So um, here at the River Mill Center, we use whole foods. We have a garden, we plant um, vegetables, and we have a lot of that stuff put into our meals. So we use fresh ingredients, um, we create low sodium meals, and we create low fat meals. You can go to the next slide. Okay. So sodium is a mineral found in most foods. Our body needs sodium to promote normal muscle and nerve function. It provides a healthy balance of body fluids. Most table salts are made from sodium chloride. Salt used when preparing or flavoring foods usually contains sodium. So having too much sodium in your diet is bad for your health. Consuming high sodium foods regularly can cause your body to retain excess water. With the extra body water, your organs must work harder. This increases your risk for high blood pressure, which can harm your heart and kidney function. Next slide. Um, sodium daily intakes, um, on average for one to three-year-olds, it's about 1,200 milligrams per day. For four to eight-year-olds, it's 1,500 milligrams per day. Uh, nine to 13-year-olds, 1,800 milligrams per day. And for 14 years and older, it's 2,300 milligrams per day. The typical American diet unfortunately, it contains over 3,400 milligrams of sodium. Next slide. Uh, so 
the, the foods that contain the most sodium are fast foods like pizza, burgers. So stay away from all the fast food places. Um, processed meats such as bacon, sausage, lunch, lunch meats and hot dogs, um, breads and rolls or grains that include sauces or seasonings that include salt, um, canned vegetables. We use all frozen vegetables here um, or fresh vegetables. Canned soups or frozen dinners. We make all our soups from scratch um, and we never have frozen dinners. <laughs> we always make everything from scratch. Um, snacks, your chips, pretzels, or crackers, things like that are very high in sodium. Um, and your condiments, including salad dressings, also have a lot of sodium in them. Next slide. Um, so in order to lower your intake, um, add a variety of fruits and vegetables regularly. Um, look for, you know, for frozen products, look for ones without added sauces or sodium. I know a lot of this, the vegetables in the grocery stores will have sauce on them. Um, if choosing a canned vegetable, select low sodium or no salt added items. Um, limit your intake of highly processed foods by cooking from scratch. Um, choose lower sodium options for protein foods, such as fresh or frozen lean cuts of meat. Um, we use fresh chicken. We have seafood when we do salmon. Um, I get the salmon in and I fillet it and skin it myself. Um, skip the salt. A lot of recipes call for salt. Just, just omit it. Don't even put it in there. Put a little bit extra garlic or pepper to make it, you know, the salt gotta go. <laughs> next, but next slide. Okay. Um, so step by step nutrition labels, um, you check your serving sizes, check the calories in one serving, um, check the percent of daily value, um, and check the ingredients. I mean, you got to it's, it's label reading. You really have to read the labels to, to see the sodium that's added to a lot of the foods that you eat now. Um, next slide. Um, so, you, oh, <laughs> so low sodium cooking, um, we cook from scratch. We don't add any salt to the recipes. We use low sodium bases. Uh, minor brand has a good low sodium base. Um, use low sodium sauces. We make a lot of our own sauces so we don't have the sodium. Um, use unsalted butter. Um, use fresh herbs. We grow our own herbs in the garden along with our vegetables. Um, mashed potato tip. If you cook the potatoes with garlic cloves in it, um, it will add flavor to the potatoes instead of adding salt to, to the potatoes to make the flavor, you add your garlic. We have salt and pepper on the tables for the seniors to use themselves if they want to add their own salt to the food. Next slide. Um, this is one of our dinners we serve, chicken thigh bone. Um, and we just use pepper, basil, rosemary, garlic. It was um, topped with a simple sauce. We use from the drippings of the chicken, a little bit of cornstarch to thicken it. Um, the rice is a blend of white rice and wild rice. We added pepper and a small amount of butter. Uh, and the carrots are steamed and left plain. Next slide. And this is chicken cacciatore. Um, it's chicken thighs with peppers, basil, garlic, topped with roasted peppers and onions and tomato sauce. And they love this one. We have parsley um, to garnish. We make our own spaghetti sauce here. Um, next slide. And this is a salmon dish. So like I said, I, I skin and fillet the salmons as you know, when they come in. Um, this is a nice dill and basil sauce. Um, we put lemon slices on it with a light cream sauce and rice pilaf. And again, this, the vegetables, we generally steam all of our vegetables because then they, they're, they can add their own salt if they wish to. Next slide. Uh, and this is a Mexican chicken salad, which they really liked. It was the first time we ever had it. Um, it's romaine and iceberg mixed. And we had a salsa of black bean, corn, tomato, peppers, mango, lime, orange juice, and cilantro. And we made our own dressing, which was shallots, honey, extra virgin olive oil, and pepper. And we topped it with a plain chicken breast cooked with garlic and pepper. And it was very, very good. Next slide. Oh, and that's all for me. All right. Thank you, Anne. And next up, we have Catherine. Great. Thanks so much. 
All right, I'm very happy to be with you all today. Laura, we can go on to the next slide. Right. Um, so thanks for giving the introduction. Um, I'm very happy to be here uh, on behalf of Mom's Meals. I'm the Chief Nutrition Officer. And I first wanted to do a quick introduction to Mom's Meals. I know we have a lot of folks who um, work to support um, you know, individuals aging at home. And our mission is to improve life through better nutrition at home. So we are a very mission-driven organization and we do um, work with a lot of um, individuals out there who are aging in place in the community where um, you know, people want to be and uh, maintain their quality of life for as long as possible. So on the next slide, um, we are a national provider of home delivered meals. Our meals are medically tailored and I'll talk about our different menus that we offer, including lower sodium. Um, but we have been at this for 24 years now. So we are um, headquartered in Iowa and we do have three USDA inspected kitchens today, Iowa, Ohio, and a third now in Oklahoma City. Um, and we have um, that national footprint, again, to support any needs uh, for any clients that are being served um, across the country. Next slide. Um, primarily, we are a, a healthcare provider. So that includes individuals um, you know, supporting um, aging folks in the community. It also includes um, state Medicaid programs, managed Medicaid, Medicare Advantage. Um, you know, we work directly with a lot of community-based organizations and AAAs. We work with hospitals and health systems, um, and we do provide all types of support. Long-term care support, you know, is, is very common for individuals who might be receiving home and community-based service um, waiver programs at home, or, um, you know, could be Older, Amer um, Older Americans Act um, meals at home as well. But we offer um, meals for a variety of conditions as well, post-discharge, people who are going into the hospital in their own home, um, chronic condition management like hypertension, diabetes, heart failure, uh, all of those are very nutrition sensitive. And, uh, you know, we, we provide a lot of lower sodium meals for those programs. Um, we also have programs for maternal health. If people have high blood pressure during, um, you know, during their pregnancy or gestational diabetes, um, childhood health, and then food insecurity as well. But we partner, um, again, with a variety of organizations, including a lot of um, the health plans out there who might be um, supporting meals in different waiver or um, other programs. All right, here we go. Let's get into um, what we're here to talk about, uh, lower sodium meals. So mom's meals, because our meals are fully prepared, are really, really convenient option for people who have um, you know, functional limitations or limitations in their ability to uh, you know, just have the, the sort of the energy or have the um, desire to cook each and every meal at home. Uh, you know, we all crave convenience. Um, I wish even as a dietitian that I love cooking. Um, I don't cook three meals from scratch a day. You know, some are gonna be um, more of the heat and eat or easy to assemble. And I certainly do love scratch cooking as well. But uh, the fully prepared meal option is really great again for people who have, um, you know, different functional limitations. They could have mobility limitations, transportation limitations. Our meals are delivered direct to doorstep and they're fully prepared. Uh, they're refrigerated, so you can see them stacked right there in the refrigerator, and um, you know, really convenient for uh, you know older adults to take out and just heat up in the microwave. They can be heated in a conventional oven if a microwave's not available, or even if somebody only has a hot plate, if they have a very limited um, living space and food prep area, and you know, they may only have a hot plate. Um, meals can be popped out in a skillet and just heated with a little water, um, you know, right on a burner. Uh, our meals also come with sides. You can see some of those stacked there. It could be applesauce or a fruit cup. It could be a cheese stick, an orange, an oatmeal raisin cookie, um, et cetera. So everyone gets an entree and then there are gonna be one or two sides that come with the meal as well. Um, I mentioned that our meals are medically tailored. So our meals are designed by our team of chefs and registered dietitians. Um, so we have an executive chef who 
really is in charge of the meal planning. Um, we really work on our menus and we update them twice a year. So there's always seasonal ingredients and flavors and variety. Um, at any given time, we have about 70 meals available across our different menus. Um, and you might see the same meal show up on different menus, maybe with a tweak to a sauce or a side, and that might make it lower sodium or renal friendly, for example. Um, all of our meals come with the nutrition, uh, nutrition facts panel that's FDA approved. So you can see the milligrams of sodium per serving, just like on any packaged food. So for folks who have worked with a dietitian or their provider to really learn about label reading, it should be very familiar and easy to read. We also have um, the full ingredients list and allergens. So again, um, just like any other packaged food, we have that FDA approved nutrition facts panel. Um, but let's take a look at these menu options. Um, it starts with general wellness. That's just, you know, a diet that's going to support the dietary guidelines for Americans. It's just a well-balanced, well-rounded style of eating. Um, diabetes friendly is going to be uh, lower in carbs per meal and then also lower in sodium. We know that, uh, you know, diabetes is going to um, accelerate the development of chronic conditions like renal disease and um, heart disease, and sodium is limited in those meals as well. So in the um, average for the entree is gonna be 570 and the full meal, including sides, it's a little bit higher. Our lower sodium menus, however, is a, a max of 600 milligrams per full meal. That includes the entree and the sides. So really um, nice and low in sodium. Again, no label reading required if somebody is just kind of ordering off of the lower sodium menu or you know, you as a professional are ordering those for your clients that you're serving. Um, you know, the label of course will always be there, but you can rest assured that that meal is going to be healthy for that individual who has hypertension, heart disease, et cetera. Um, next, we have heart-friendly. Um, that is gonna be lower in sodium and fat and saturated fat. Um, Renal-friendly is gonna be sodium controlled as well. Um, we also, just to kind of round out the offering so you know what's available, um, cancer support, higher in calories or protein. This is also great for people who are malnourished and just need catch up calories. Um, we use this program for pregnant women as well. Uh, we do have a vegetarian menu. We have a gluten-free menu. Um, we also have pureed. So people who have um, dysphagia or have lost teeth as they age and need an altered texture, um, a full pureed menu as well. But um, that's an overview. And uh, we do see, I would say, the most common menus that we see are kind of right up there at the top. General wellness, diabetes, lower sodium, heart friendly, just because we know um, hypertension is sort of that leading chronic condition. Um, and then, you know, heart disease and diabetes, very close. Right, we can go on to the next slide. So I just wanted to show you, um, you know, just a, a nice visual of one of our meals that's sort of outside of the tray. So you get a look at what that looks like. We, we do recommend sort of plating, you know, you eat with your eyes first. You certainly don't have to. If doing dishes is going to, you know, be a challenge for people again with kind of functional limitations. But um, just wanted to show you a really nice visual. This is one of our lower sodium meals. It's a barbecue chicken patty with a potato medley and green beans. The potato medley is going to be a really nice mix of roasted um, white potatoes and sweet potatoes for sort of some of the, um, you know, extra nutrient content there. And the side is applesauce. So in the entree, um, the sodium content is 543 milligrams and the applesauce is just 10 milligrams of sodium. Uh, and you might think, wow, barbecued chicken, barbecue sauce is just loaded with sodium. How can you offer that as a lower sodium meal? Uh, well, that's what I'll talk about next. So at Mom's Meals, we do make all of our own sauces. So our barbecue sauce, we make ourselves. We also make our own um, ketchup, for example. Um, meatloaf with ketchup on top is one of our most popular entrees. And um, we do make that with um, lower sodium tomato products. And so that's sort of the base. And then we add some really nice seasonings um, that you know aren't um, strictly uh, full of sodium. So uh, you can eat barbecue sauce, you can eat ketchup, um, but we just make sure it's a lower sodium version and we do prepare those ourselves in house. All right, so on the next slide, what you're going to see here um, is just momsmeals.com. So you might have questions about, you know, the variety of our um, lower sodium meals and 
you know, you can find all of those just out on momsmeals.com at any time. We do have a little, even an entry portal for people who are at AAAs or working um, with aging individuals. You can just click on AAAs and state governments and you get more information about, um, you know, supporting clients who, um, you know, if you're at an area agency on aging or at a Medicaid program or other senior meals program, go ahead and click there and you'll find some really nice information. And then, um, you know, just some other meals that we offer. Again, we, we are right now in our spring and summer um, menu. And so we're gonna have some nice um, lighter options for the summer. Um, one of our, you know, kind of most popular the summer has been our creamy pasta primavera with ham and cornbread. Again, you might think, oh, ham, that's full of sodium. Again, we're gonna choose a lower sodium variety and balance it out with the sodium for the rest of the meal, but it has a really nice, um, sauce, and it does have um, a nice variety of vegetables as well. Uh, another popular one um, has been the sweet and sour chicken, stir fry vegetables and rice. Again, you know, kind of some of these flavors in, in sauces like a sweet and sour chicken are typically low to the sodium. So you can really have these types of flavorful foods, um, you know, in a lower sodium version, kind of no preparation needed. Um, you know, some other options on that um, menu for the summer are going to include, um, you know, favorites like uh, beef pepper steak with gravy um, over pasta with a fruit crisp. Um, we do have um, chicken teriyaki and stir fry vegetables and rice. We have a breakfast burrito kit with a spiced fruit medley. And so that's a really nice um, breakfast option. The breakfast items that we offer are very popular. People really do like a hot breakfast and um, that is, um, I would say a treat. Um, a popular one for the summer is also corn chowder and peaches with cherries. So some really nice summer fruits as you know, kind of the side uh, that comes along um, with that meal. And then the corn chowder, just again, featuring that really um, delicious summer corn, um, you know, that we all love to enjoy in, you know, in a very hearty, um, thicker soup. That's very, very satisfying. And yet it's a really nice um, light and lower sodium meal option. So you can find all that on momsmeals.com. Also, um, I encourage you as you go out there, we do have other resources as you think about planning uh, lower sodium meals, or as you think about supporting your clients who um, require lower sodium meals, we have a newsletter called The Full Scoop. And you can see just kind of right up there um, at the top of the masthead, The Full Scoop. That is our monthly newsletter. And it's filled with um, everything from news articles about nutrition to simple tips and tricks like we're talking about here. But you can just put in your email address and receive that. And you, know, you can also kind of browse around that Full Scoop area. And there are a lot of um, articles and I would say just really practical resources for controlling sodium and you know, planning heart healthy um, menus and things like that. Um, so I encourage you to look out there, but um, you know, I also wanted to um, bring back just a few of the, the very simple tips and tricks that we use at Mom's Meals and creating our meals. And this could really be used for people who are cooking at home by scratch or people who are you know, preparing meals in a senior center. Um, so we always start with flavors that appeal um, to a broad audience and the general population. So um, you know, we are serving uh, you know, over a million meals a week at Mom's Meals and we need to appeal, you know, we, we do have a lot of um, culturally sensitive um, meals on our menu as well. And, you know, we want to appeal to the broad population. So we look at flavors that can go into a lot of different dishes. So we use a lot of garlic and onion powder. Those are, um, you know, sort of across a cultures. Um, they're, uh, you know, just, they provide a really nice, um, robust flavor profile. That's not too spicy. It's just a really nice savory, um, you know, spice that comes through in, in the dish. Another powder that our uh, team of dietitians and chefs use is mushroom powder. And you might think, wow, that's interesting, but um, it really does bring a really nice umami flavor to kind of boost uh, the flavor profile of the meal. And it doesn't add any sodium. 
Um, next, uh, our team of chefs creates spice blends. And so um, these are just different spice mixes. There is usually a base of garlic and onion in there because they're so versatile, but then they kind of round out that spice mix um, with you know, different components. So we have a Scandinavian spice blend. We have an Italian blend that's gonna include some oregano and thyme, and that can go on you know, something like green beans. And again, kind of that um, roasted potatoes or sweet potatoes mix. Um, so we're going to spice up the vegetables um, and, you know, the proteins um, in different ways using uh, those spice mixes. Mrs. Dash is also just a really functional, um, broadly available seasoning blend. You can find it in any grocery store, um, but that is something that is very, very versatile and can be used on anything from, you know, chicken to vegetables to even on eggs, scrambled eggs. Uh, you know, it's going to give it some nice, um, interesting flavor that's, um, you know, lower sodium. So as you think about, you know, even creating a table blend for at home, you might think about something like, um, you know, again, that onion and garlic with a mix of black pepper, you know, you can um, kind of experiment and see what um, is going to taste good. But those are, I would say, some of the most common um, spices that we're using across our dishes. Um, and creating that spice blend for your table at home um, or, you know, as the seniors are supporting, instead of having that salt shaker on the table, just create that spice blend. And, you know, somebody can always um, kind of spice up different dishes that they might have at home and, um, you know, just, just keep that there. Even have it, you know, we're all used to going for the salt shaker, but if you kind of mix up something else in advance and have it there ready to go, um, you're just going to reach for that. We all, again, love convenience. Um, so I guess lastly, Mom's Meals also has uh, registered dietitians. Um, so we do provide, uh, you know, answers or education or responses to clients who may have questions about how, you know, our lower sodium meals are prepared or how, you know, they could, um, you know, try some of this at home or whatever that um, interest may be. We do offer recipes as well. Those are available on our website. Um, I mentioned some of the other resources in the full scoop, but also when someone orders, um, you know, we want to make sure that their uh, people are understanding the basics for caring for their chronic condition, again, like hypertension or heart disease or heart failure, where nutrition is um, really uh, critical to the ongoing management of their condition. This would include diabetes, renal disease, etc. cetera. Um, we include a four-page educational booklet in the first meal shipment that someone receives when they start with us on, you know, a meals program. So when we get a referral, um, you know, from a case manager, uh, you know, from a, a AAA professional, you know, we're going to take that, we're going to prepare, uh, you know, that order for the client. And then in the first cooler, they're going to get an educational book that's specific to the menu that's been selected for them. So if it's the, you know, lower sodium or heart friendly or diabetes friendly, renal friendly, they're going to get that booklet. And it's um, written at a sixth grade reading level. It's available in English and Spanish, but that just provides, you know, kind of the basics for healthy eating for that chronic condition. So um, at Mom's Meals, we want to make sure that we're providing sort of that uh, nutrition that's appropriate for the chronic condition, but also doing some education to make sure that people really understand, um, you know, when they're selecting other foods uh, for their diet, um, and not heating and eating, you know, a fully prepared meal, um, you know, how to stay within those healthy eating guidelines. So um, that would be, I think, the conclusion of my comments here and happy to take any questions um, sort of at the end of the presentation. I'll pass it back over to Laura. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you, Catherine. And next we have Pam. Yeah, thank you. And um, thank you, Catherine. That was Fascinating and um, love hearing what you all are doing. It was great and seeing the chef's touch, it was fabulous. Um, and that is exactly what we're gonna be talking about um, in, in my time with you. And that is to share with you a story that I'm sharing more and more these days. It's the story of the CIA's Healthy Menus R&D Collaborative of which I am a co-chair. As you know, CIA is not that spy thing. It is the Culinary Institute of America and the Healthy Menus R&D Collaborative um, 
we'll tell a little bit about in just a moment, but we have had quite the journey because we actually came together back in 2010 because of the first rumblings of some voluntary, potentially mandatory um, mandates um, around sodium reduction. Um, large volume food service came together to say, could we collaborate together to find tasty solutions to a changing appetite. It's that journey, it's that story now, what, 13 years in the making that I would love to share with you in these few minutes we have. And it couldn't be more timely because in some ways I feel like we're back to the future. The same reasons we came together in 2010 are exactly the same kinds of conversations we're having today. So much of the landscape is, is emerging in a very similar way. So the need couldn't be higher. The um, challenges, however, could not be so um, seemingly insurmountable, particularly when we look at large volume food service. So again, much to come. So Laura, I'm going to be whizzing through some slides pretty quickly. Let's take a look at the next one. And that's the Healthy Menus R&D Collaborative. Next up. These are some of our brands, as I mentioned, all large volume food service. So it covers the gambit from QSR all the way through to um, large Compass, Aramark, um, Sodexo. We have Applebee's and True Foods, again, seemingly on different sides of the plane. We have Golden Corral and, and Outback. We have Chipotle and Checkers and Subway. So again, we cover the full gambit of not only large volume food service, but serving a lot of people. Next slide, Laura. When I say a lot of people, a lot of people. Um, 38 million meals a day are served by Healthy Menus R&D Collaborative member company. And that's an important point because it really said to us from the get-go that small all changes can have huge impact on public health. You don't have to take something from extremely high sodium to low sodium. If you just start to back up a little bit, if you can make subtle changes so much so that sometimes the guest doesn't even notice, the impact can really be huge. Again, small changes, huge impact when it comes to public health. Next slide, Laura. Um, as I mentioned, the genesis was us coming together back in 2010. It was when the Institutes of Medicine first put out their report, Strategies to Reduce Sodium Intake. Um, New York was looking to put the warning sign on the label in Philadelphia following we felt that it was time for competitors that might normally sit in a room with arms crossed and not wanting to share the recipe for the secret sauce would they actually be willing to collaborate? And we discovered that these challengers were so great and covered so much of the industry that yes, indeed they were. So we came together, we um, identified what our purpose and our mission and our vision is as every group does, but we identified sodium reduction and increasing use of produce as our initial top priorities. Why? Because when increasing produce, as we know, we're not just increasing the the nutrition, nutrient rich density on a dish, we're also increasing the potassium and other minerals that help to offset some of the sodium aspects. We also found that having produce in our pantries and in our dishes made a difference with taste. So more on that to come. We aligned on a strategic process. Next slide, Laura which is what we still follow today um, as we come together. We identify challenges, how to find tasting success with lowering sodium. We gather information and expertise. What are all of the alternatives that are available to us? We experiment in the CIA kitchens, which are quite lovely in and of themselves. We create some um, solutions, or at least what we think could be solutions. And then we go back into our own individual operations to either be able to work with those solutions and then evaluate them. And then it all comes back together. So much so, I'll show you at the end, that we've come out with a white paper on tasting success with reducing salt. Next, next slide, Laura. 
Um, again, started in 2010. It was a time, as I mentioned, that lots of struggles were in play. It wasn't just about lowering sodium. At the same time, meat prices were soaring. Um, shortages were in place. Supply chain disruption. Inflation. Sound familiar? Again, back to the future. It was one of the reasons that we found um, a really unique solution that was created by the Healthy Menus R&D Collaborative. And it maybe it's one that you have already heard of or maybe even utilized in your own operation. And that is we created something called the blend. We found that if you could replace 25% of the animal protein in any kind of a ground meat application, you could have a huge impact on the sustainability issues. You could have a huge impact on the nutrient aspect because you're pulling out 25% of the sat fat. You're pulling out um, a, a good proportion. You're increasing that produce that's in it all kinds of great things, but what we didn't know, next slide, until we went into sensory studies is that this blend, knowing that finely chopped mushrooms would be that replacement, pull 25% of animal protein output, 25% finely chopped mushrooms that look like, act like, taste like, perform like ground meat, it would allow a healthier version of very iconic American foods from burgers to tacos to chili to meatloaf to meatballs. But what we had and what we discovered is it was better flavor, better texture, but with less salt. Why? Well, because the umami, that fifth sense, that unctuousness and savoriness that mushrooms bring to the party actually enabled us to lower the amount of salt that we used in any of those applications. So yes, better nutrition benefits and sustainability and cost, but it was that incredible flavor boost. We discovered that mushrooms were the ultimate flavor lifter. So the blend was a star that was born. Next slide, Laura. Um, we did some sensory research with UC Davis and found that in um, very um, exacting kinds of taste and sensory um, studies that the subjects um, actually preferred the taste of a ground meat that had the mushrooms in it, even if they identified as mushroom haters at the get-go, they enjoyed it more. And what they said is it was almost too salty. So we actually did a whole nother set. That's one of the things that gave us the proof and the pudding that we actually could lower sodium by utilizing this unique concept called the blend. Next slide. And it's all because of that umami. Again, the ultimate flavor lifter. It led us to know that there have to be a lot of combinations. There have to be culinary solutions that could provide us with flavor boosting that would enable not so much just a lower sodium dish that just tasted less flavorful, but more importantly, tasted more flavorful, more craveable. And it was all about the culinary technique and the ingredients. Next slide, Laura. Um, we put it into practice, real world impact in 2015, Pizza Hut silently rolled out um, a, a crust that had lower sodium, but also did a meatball made with this blend that gave not only lower calories, but 53% less sodium, 50 or 60% less sat fat, but high on flavor, high on craveability, high on consumer preference. They didn't have to um, advertise it as being a lower sodium meatball. It was just all about a delicious one. Next slide. Um, Sonic did a very similar thing where they rolled out their Slinger, a blended mushroom burger. Again, all of a sudden, they were able to increase the produce. But in the process of that, they were able to not only roll out a burger that was less than 350 calories, but one that had 30% less sodium than a similar burger of that size. That was huge and it wasn't intentioned. Again, culinary solutions that can make the healthy difference. Next slide. 
Um, some of our strategies, as we've just said, were not just the blend itself. We kind of went into a whole nother routine and process of looking at all of the different applications that could make the difference always looking for those culinary solutions. And these are some of those processes that were employed by our Healthy Menus R&D Collaborative members. Next slide. It was always about achieving balance. If you just cut sodium, but don't have any other impact on that recipe, if you're not also looking at the acidity, if you're not also looking at the sweetness, because, um, Sodium blocks bitterness. So if you're cutting sodium in kale or in spinach or in arugula or in something that would be a little more bitter, you're gonna end up with something bitter. Tomatoes, if they have seeds, can have a bitter edge. If you cut the salt, that's what you get. But if you can achieve some balance with getting the right kind of sweetness, not from sugar, but maybe adding some fruit, adding watermelon to that salad or adding some red tart cherries. Again, being able to find that balance, that's what it was all about. And that really is what it's all about. Next slide, Laura. Um, we really always look at not what a food doesn't have, but what a food has. It's not about taking out the salt, taking out the fat, taking out the sat fat, taking out the sugar. It's about what do you put in to give the nutrient density, but also to give that flavor. Because at the end of the day, no matter what the age, it's all about the flavor. At restaurants where it's all about People order things they love, they order things that they crave, they come back because they crave it. It's so critical that we lower the sodium while making that food as craveable as, as it's ever been. It's about what food has, not what it doesn't have. Next slide. Um, that flavor model that I discussed is one of the things that we employ time and time again with any given dish. We're always looking at um, quality ingredients. We're always looking for, can we use spices or aromatics, as you just heard um, from the earlier speakers? We coax out the umami. That's what we do with the blend. We try to bring a craveability to a dish. That sweet and sour balance. The technique, um, roasting a, an item as compared to just boiling it. Um, roasting brings out that natural caramelization, so it brings a depth and a richness of flavor. Caramelizing onions and garlic, roasting garlic. Again, you're not adding salt. All you're doing is bringing out the flavor. And when you do salt, it's strategic salting. Um, culinary students have been trained since hello at salting at every level of cooking, every stage of cooking. What we try to do instead is teach that you salt last. You're very strategic about your salting as compared to just gratuitously salting something because it's always been salted. My grandmother did it. The chef that taught me did it. Um, that's the way the recipe calls for, salt to taste. Well, whose taste? Again, it's being very strategic about that salt use, finding ways to increase the flavor before looking to the salt shaker. Next slide. And these are some of those kind of building flavor um, aspects, our pantry that builds the flavors, which you've already have just heard um, from spices and herbs, garlic and celery, again, those mushrooms. Um, what, what do you do with heat? How does spicy impact it? Um, well, if you have a population that maybe doesn't tolerate spicy heat so much, how about smoky heat? How about developing flavor without that kind of a fiery heat? Um, tomato, even tomato powders, citruses, and vinegars. The acidity helps to, again, bring that essential balance. Um, age, fermented um, products, particularly dairy, also adds an incredible umami aspect. Um, toasting nuts and seeds, even toasting spices can make such a difference, as does fermenting and roasting, grilling, and again, bringing out those layers and layers of flavor. Our goal is to so entertain the palate that no one ever questions 
does this need salt? Because there's so much flavor that's in it. Next up. Um, one of our success stories that came from Harvard um, School of Public Health, the dining director, Martin Breslin, is one of our members. They made a huge sweep and they just changed the kind of salt they used. Um, instead of classic salt, they switched to a diamond crystal kosher salt where the crystal um, shape is such that it has a significantly lower amount of sodium in the same volume that you would use in a traditional recipe. So if you're using traditional salt now, simply cutting to a diamond crystal or converting to a diamond crystal lowered their sodium across the board by 33%. They made no other change. And yet they were already meeting those recommended voluntary requirements simply by changing the kind of salt. Gives more salt bang for the buck. Next up. Um, we also did some practice. We, we took a simple tomato sauce. Um, you were talking earlier about um, that chicken cacciatore and how it was one of the, the guest's favorites. Well, it should be because there's so much flavor there. But a classic um, commercial tomato sauce has about 500 milligrams of sodium in a half a cup. We worked on doing a simple tomato sauce that would reduce that significantly. If we did it without any salt added at all, just culinary technique, olive oil and onion and celery, some garlic, a little bit of Italian herbs, using a high quality tomato, we could come up with a tomato sauce that was just 38 milligrams per cup, but it needed something. It needed, again, strategic salting. Next up, we did a whole host of different kinds of options. Again, with a classic commercial one being 470 to 520, we did that simple marinara I just showed you, but added a little bit of diamond crystal kosher salt. We also did one adding a potassium salt, um, again, using um, a salt you know, replacer, if you will. Um, Again, so low in sodium, but achieve the same flavor, yeast extract, even dreaded MSG, which is kind of in a back to the future, kind of coming into its own again, um, was we really do realize there wasn't a lot of solid research that gave that demonization to monosodium glutamate. Public perception is that it's negative, but is it? lot of science that's behind it right now. What we do with the blend in mushrooms, it's creating natural MSG. That's what gives that umami. So one of the tests we did is we used a mushroom powder blend and we used a roasted ground mushroom. We used a ponzu, kind of a citrus soy sauce, a little bit of pomegranate concentrate. What we were able to see is that we could significantly cut the sodium, but actually have an even higher flavor by using ingredients and culinary techniques. It can be done and it's tasting success with lower sodium. Next slide. Um, so that's the difference right there, a 36% reduction of sodium or even more. Next slide. Um, and that's where you'll find some of these tips and techniques that we've talked about. Again, everything that this hour and webinar is about is how you can be equipped and empowered to make the difference. And what I just want to say is that difference can be made, but it's not just cutting the salt and with it the flavor going to, it's how do you build the flavor in while getting success with cutting the salt. And that's the end of my time with you, but I think a lot of you have a lot of questions. So Laura, back to you. All right, thank you. If all of the panelists could come on video and everyone in the audience, feel free to enter your questions into the Q&A and we'll address them. Um, we actually have a, a question from the chat that could be answered by anyone, I think, um, asking about vitamin loss if you rinse the canned vegetables to reduce sodium, if anybody wants to tackle that question. 
I mean, I can certainly from the nutritional and chef side. Um, again, as you know, um, water soluble vitamins are most destroyed by exposure to heat, um, exposure to water and exposure to air. Um, but you're not necessarily having those leached out into the water different than if you were cooking vegetables in a stock or in water. You always try to find a way to use that in another way. But the reality is the heat is going to be taking care of that anyway. There's really not a lot that's left of those in some of it. Now, the fat-soluble vitamins, the vitamin A, um, vitamin K, those are not inhibited by heat or by water loss. All right, thank you. And while uh, people enter their questions into the chat, I had a few questions for each of you. Anne, um, so when you switched to scratch cooking, um, did your male participants notice that the sodium was gone? Or like, what did they notice the most when you switched over? Oh, you're on mute, on mute. Uh, the flavor mostly, I mean, when you scratch cook, you know, you're adding flavor. You're adding, you know, like I said, we, we have our own herbs in the garden, we dry them. So we have them for the entire winter. Um, yeah, it, there's so much you can do with herbs and um, to add flavor to it without having the salt. So they, they, they notice the difference. We have quite a few um, seniors coming in for lunch. You know, we have anywhere between 65 and 120 people coming in for lunch every day. Wow. <clears throat> okay. And then I have a question for Pam. Is there a critical education piece to training cooks to use less salt in cooking? Wow, thank you for that question. And I kind of started to answer it towards the end of my presentation. It's it's that notion of strategic salting. Again, rather than necessarily thinking you can use no salt, if you're starting at a base of flavor, then you add just enough salt, but it's not just salt to taste. It's not just throwing the handful in, nor is it needing to do it at every stage. So you, you always think of salting last, um, but in a big way, that's, the, that's kind of the tactic. But I think much more important is the envisionment that food can be delicious with less sodium. Our palates have been so trained towards high salt foods and to be able to envision that that can change and it does change. Some of that happened during the pandemic when people started eating at home, they don't use the amount of processed foods that are oftentimes used out. They started cooking at home and their palates began to change. So when they went back to restaurants, all of a sudden that food seemed a lot saltier than it used to. Unfortunately, those palates change in one way, but they quickly go back the other way too. It's a little bit like a rubber band. So if we can get our palates geared towards looking for flavor without so much salt, but you know what? That starts right with the cook or the chef themselves. They have to be envisioned for themselves. This isn't cooking for someone else. This is cooking in a way that, that really does um, nourish and delight. Oh, um, there's a question from the audience about special tips for those who maybe have less taste or smell, either from medications or from chronic diseases, if any of you have an idea to make it still taste good when there's reduced taste. That might be a tough one, but I do feel like there are plenty of older adults who do taste less, you know, the senses diminish. Yeah. There, there is, and I, I mean, I, I feel like I'm talking a lot, but I can also answer that a little bit because it is a big deal. Um, again, we, we've always known that taste buds 
lack of a better term, die off as people age. They have much less taste buds at age 25 than they did at age five. They have fewer still at, at 65. And so that kind of puts an onus of responsibility on us to make the food even more tasty. Um, because again, they're not picking up those same kinds of nuances of flavor, which is why we've always relied on sight. Um, Catherine, you talked about that, that vibrant color and how it just almost gets people excited. And you talked about it too. So color is important, but we also have always relied on smell because even if people couldn't taste it, just that aromatic that would come from it. Well, with COVID, so many people have had that diminished, if not gone, particularly the long haulers. Um, what we find is that even the long haulers that have very little smell, they seem to pick up the smell of um, floral. So again, lemon zest and herbs um, seem to give a sense of something that connects them to the food. Um, especially if there's a visual cue of the lemon there too. Um, they also do a little more with smokiness. Um, maybe that's the body survival skill that says, can't, can't smell food, but I can smell smoke. Where there's smoke, there's fire. And so maybe that's it. So getting smoked paprika, getting things in that bring that element of smokiness seems to give a little bit more of a connection to the food. Yeah, I think, um, Pam, those are fantastic recommendations. I think I was going to also um, look at those spice blends and citrus, like imagine, you know, the, the oily um, citrus oil you're going to get from an orange peel, uh, you know, or lemon zest. That's really going to, uh, I think, you know, play into not only the flavor, but the aroma. Um, and I would say vinegars as well. They're just a really like that nice tanginess, although it's not like a robust flavor, maybe at the front of your tongue, it's more of like that, you know, the tanginess that's still going to bring you delight that from, from having the vinegar. Um, it, you know, think about a dressing for salads or, um, you know, could even be um, like a, a bowl type of dish with poultry and grain and greens kind of all mixed together. Um, really nice uh, vinegar vinaigrettes can really, I think, um, bring out some different flavors that you're going to sense in other ways outside of just, you know, purely taste bud sensory. Right. Yeah. yeah. Texture is big too, um, because again, that crunch factor um, is also, you, you have this memory of crunch. Crunch is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for our- That's satisfying. <laughs> um, and for our final question, I want to note that these slides and recordings will be sent out to everyone who attended this webinar and will also be available on the on ACL's Nutrition and Aging Resource Center. Um, and then as a final question, um, what are some good ways to help with staff training? Like, Anne, how did you guys get trained up to do it? Or, you know, Pam and Catherine, you both pointed out resources on your respective websites. So always done it. Um, I've been cooking since I was 17 years old. Um, and I learned a lot early on, on, you know, different flavors and things. Um, but we, I've always scratch cooked. I, I come from a big family. So my mother never opened a can of anything. She made everything from scratch. Um, so I just always, that's how I know how to cook. <laughs> I, you know, I, and even my children, I've never, they never had raviolis out of a can. They don't even know what that is. And they've never had box mac and cheese. They don't, you know, I have always cooked from scratch for them. And I, and it's, it's, once you get used to cooking from scratch, um, it really doesn't take, a lot of people are like, oh, it takes to cook from scratch. It really doesn't, really doesn't. You just, you know, it, for me, I can make dinner in, in 20 minutes, <laughs> you know? Um, but it, you just have to get used to cooking from scratch. And once you start doing it more, it doesn't take as much time to do it. And it's so much healthier. It tastes so much better. And you, you don't have all that sodium because a lot of the stuff is just loaded with sodium. Yeah. Regarding training, I know we're, um, we're at time. Um, just a quick note that 
uh, for individuals working with um, people who are aging and in place, Moms Meals does have a team of territory managers across the US. They're all you know, kind of local to different areas and they are available for AAA training, CBO training, senior center training, on um, the topic of lower sodium eating, as well as you know, just providing an overview of the lower sodium meals and the menus that Mom's Meals offers. So you can um, just get in touch with us or me if you want to share my contact information. Um, I can put you in touch with the territory manager in your area. Awesome. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, speakers. Um, and everyone, have a good rest of your Friday.